All right, welcome back everyone. Um, this is going to be part three of our tower defense series and I'm just going to quickly show you guys what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to basically be um, adding in our tower and it's going to be able to shoot uh, to the furthest away uh, soldier, right? In, as long as it's within its range and we'll also be able to drag and drop on the right side as you can see. Um, the tower also rotates which is really cool and yeah that's it so let's get right into that so the first thing i've uh, changed off of screen but i'll show you guys anyways are some of the window settings so the viewport and width i've height uh the stuff i've changed the mode i'm going to change back to windowed it doesn't matter too much but that's okay um the override i've it's basically a third of the actual width and height as you can see and then the mode it's viewport and then the aspect is going to be keep and that is it um, if you are wondering where the height and width are uh, from, it's going to be the height and width of the actual screen, as you can see. So here we have the 2048 and the other one was 3540. So that's the actual size of the map. So now we should be able to get something like this, All right? And we see our little soldiers spawning in, so that's cool. All right, and just last thing, um, the camera I'm going to delete because we don't necessarily need it. Um, and having the zoom will mess up the uh, UI later on. So we're gonna not we're not gonna use camera, but if you wanna figure that out on your own, you can, you're more than welcome to, um, but I'm not going to go through that, so. Okay, um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a towers folder which is where we're gonna put our towers. So first let's add a, or create a static body. This is going to be our red uh, bullet tower. Let's do that, save this as red bullet tower. Tower. I'm gonna put it in there. We're gonna add a collision shape to it. Um, let's see, what else do we need? I'm gonna add everything that we need. Uh, we're gonna add a marker 2D. This is where we're gonna spawn, or the position we're gonna spawn our bolts. So we can actually move that out. And you can see it if you zoom in far enough um, and we're also going to add a area 2d and then we're also going to add a regular node i'm going to explain why we need that later which will be fun and in our area 2d we're going to duplicate the shape and we're just going to drag that in okay uh, and lastly the sprite so it's going to be 250 i believe yeah 250 and for the node or the sprite let me so generally in Bill, um, usually most things, when we rotate them, or we're gonna be using a function called look at, but when we look at something, generally it's as if we're looking to the right, and then we're gonna rotate it towards whatever we're looking at, right? So in order to make this like proper, properly look at things, we're gonna have to change the rotation in our tower to 90 degrees. And then we're also gonna go to the scale uh, the scale, we're going to double it because it's pretty small. Um, the marker, we're actually going to put at the tip of the tower. There. And for the collision shape of this guy, we're going to put it, we're going to make it like this big. We're going to make it this as big as you want, really. But I'm going to make it cover the tower. And then this guy, we're going to give it a circle. And we're just going to give it as big of a range as we want. Um, I'm actually going to copy the... The radius I'm going to do 448. There we go. That's the radius I did in my reference. And then lastly, we're going to change this to area. We're going to change this to um, tower. And then we're going to add a script. We're going to add a tower script. So in here, we're just going to say default and add that script. Awesome. Okay. Um, I'm going to add. No, let before we add everything. Now let's make our bullet before we even start typing anything. So for our bullet, and we're, interestingly enough, we're gonna actually make a character 2D. Um, the reason is because we're gonna add velocity. Um, yeah, we're gonna add velocity and we're gonna be using move and slide. We're not gonna be doing uh, area 2D, whereas that would be cool, but it's gonna be a kinematic body or character body because it's kind of a homing device, right? We're homing towards that soldier. So. We need it to be character 2D body. Um, let's give it a collision shape. Collision shape. Um, now let's, let me check. Should be 251, that's the tower size. And then same thing for this guy. We're gonna actually change the scale to 90. And then we're gonna just put it in the middle. 
And for the shape, we're going to have it be a oval. The oval, actually, let's not put the oval yet um, because we're going to add an area 2D. We're going to add this guy, put this guy in. And this guy, we're going to also, I'm going to make it unique, but we're going to make it slightly bigger. There we go. And now let's select all of this and transform it, transform it to 90. Um, let's have to transform this one to 90 as well. Or we'll unrotate that. Um, and I think that should be good. So the reason we did that is because the collision of the actual character body, the bullet, uh, let's name this red bullet, um, and save it right here as red bullet in the scene, tower scene. Um, because the area 2D, if it's not bigger than the collision shape of the actual thing, it won't pick up anything that comes into it. Okay. Uh, let's put this on the top so that it's in the back kind of, uh, although it won't really matter. Um, now let's also give this a script. And we're going to do default. Okay. And let's delete all this. We don't need any of these just yet. Okay, so for the tower, I'm going to add in all the um, sorry, one second. Okay, yeah, for the tower, I'm going to add in all the things that we need. Ooh, I don't need that variable. Okay, I'm going to add in all the variables that we need. Okay, so here we have the bullet. Um, this will be the bullet that we just made. So let me make sure it's loading properly towers red bullet and then bullet damage that will be how much the damage does um, the path name will be we'll we'll get to that current targets um, this is going to be an array full of the targets that enter our area and you'll kind of see how we do that later the current will be the current target that we are currently shooting at the sprite is just the what is that actually oh we don't need that sorry we're gonna do this Whoop. We're going to delete the sprite. We don't need this. Uh, I was testing something earlier on stream. If you guys want to watch my stream, by the way, go uh, sub to my Twitch. I was streaming for quite a while this morning, so you can go, definitely go check that out. And, okay, so let's simplify this. A bit and let's first do a body entered signal and then body exited signal. Once again, um, body exited, please connect. There we go. Okay, um, for the body entered, this is going to be the first thing we do. Um, so I'll kind of do this line by line. Firstly, we're going to check if soldier A is in the body name. Now keep in mind, when we add the body, you know, let's actually pass so this works. Um, we're going to test this by, um, let's actually double check that we do this properly. So in our main scene, we're going to add another node 2D. This will be our towers, towers container essentially. And we'll put our towers in there for now. So let's add... Do, do, do. Where's the tower? Towers, red bullet tower. Here we go. Ooh, that range is too big. It's okay. Um, yeah, let's make it a bit smaller. All right. And so now, um, when they enter, uh, nothing happens, but um, when I am looking for the body that enters, so this is our uh, tower, which should be in that node. doesn't matter. We'll add that in a second. It's going to check for the soldier this guy right here but we want to access this entire thing right so this is the body we're accessing because this is a body but we also want to be able to access these guys which is not too hard we're actually going to i'll show you how to do that in a second um, let's actually close this we don't need that anymore um, let's also move that into towers and in our uh um, this is super simple um this there's actually a very good um built-in function that we can use which is get over overlapping bodies so this will allow us to create a temporary array or so what we're going to do is we're going to create a temporary array and we're going to add only the soldiers into it the reason being because if there's there are most likely going to be other bodies within our range meaning ourselves right because the the tower itself is a tower right a body right so in this tower area we're going to have our own body in it it's going to have tower it's also going to have other towers in it it's going to have objects i don't know right or and this will allow you to only get the soldiers in that array so we're going to make a temporary array only with the soldiers in it okay so in fact let's actually print this out and i'll show you what it gives so current targets it will print out 
hopefully when it spawns. Uh, once it enters the area, it will print out Red Bullet Tower and Soldier Bay. And then as they come in, more soldiers are going to be printed, right? So it depends on how many towers are in range, but we don't want that. We don't want the Red uh, Tower. Where is it? We don't want the Red Bullet Tower. We want only an array full of the uh, towers. Sorry, the uh, soldiers. So to do that, this is pretty easy. We're going to just for loop through the I in the current targets because this is also an array, right? We've made an array and this uh, returns an array. So if I click control and click, okay, never mind. Uh, usually when you uh, control and left click, uh, it will give you, it will take you to the online docs or the documents for it, but uh, it doesn't work for this one. It would work for this one, but not for that. I don't know. Anyways, um, we're going to basically loop through the array. And if that object, so like I has the, its name is has soldier in it, which this one doesn't, then we're going to append it. So we're going to append it into this temporary array, meaning we're going to add it into it. So this one does, so we're going to add it into it. So now our new temporary array is going to have all the objects only with soldiers in it, in that exact order, because we're looping from zero to the end, right? So yeah, that's it. Okay. And every time we have a soldier enter our, uh, what do you call it? No, sorry, that doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, let's now, let's, yeah, let's just uh, look at the temper right now. Actually, I'm going to add the child of the bullet now. Okay, so from here, whoops. So from here, we're gonna have a variable called path name. Um, I think I, oh yeah, it's up there already. So we're gonna delete that. Do, do, do. Um, and then it's going to be equal to the current target equals dot uh, dot get parent got de, eh, dot name. The reason is because in our stage, we want the um, ooh, we have to set the current target. Okay, so the current target is actually going to equal to i dot get node uh, get parent, uh, not i. Um, it's going to be okay we're gonna have to do this my bad okay let's add this in first i'll erase it and explain this and then add the next part okay so we're gonna now loop through our array of only soldiers and we're gonna ask if the current target is already equal to null then we're just gonna set it to the first one so we don't get an error so the current target is now going to be equal to i so the first one in the array so like if there's only one soldier it's going to set it to that one right um but the get parent of it so the path spawner right because what we want to do is if that tar current target is not equal null meaning there's already one we now want to take that previous um soldier and the new soldier and see which one is further ahead we want to basically hit only the first or the latest soldier in the path right so we're going to compare the progress if the progress is smaller than or equal to. So this is actually how you would target like the late last one or the first one, depending on like which one you want to target for your tower, right? So you can kind of play around with that. Um, so now we've edited the current target. Okay, now what we can do is we can say current is going to be equal to current target. Um, the reason we do this is so we can save current target outside of this uh, area entered, which we'll get into why we do that later. So after that, the path name, we set it as the current target dot get parent dot name, which is path 2D. The reason why we do this is because when I play, go into remote, if you look at the path spawner, each uh, path has its own name, right? So we're going to save that name essentially and send it over to the bullet. Um, it's not working because we don't have those in the bullet yet. So we're going to have to do that. Um, and the aim, uh, what is happening? The, oh, this is going to be aim, sorry. So from there, we're going to be making our, our bullet, right? That we preloaded. We're going to set a path name. We're going to add in the red bullet in a minute. We're going to set the bullet damage in the bullet as well. And then we're also going to add the bullet somewhere else. So the bullet has to be added to a bullet container, essentially. The reason is because if you don't do this and you just add it into the, into the bullet tower itself, um, as the tower rotates, so will the bullet. So if the bullet gets shot out of the tower and the tower starts to rotate, so will the bullet. 
even though it's trying to hit something, right? So you want that this node uh, doesn't not it does not inherit any positions or anything, right? So it's just a node, and you can put anything in there, and that those nodes will not inherit anything either. However, we do want that uh, bullet to start at the global posi the global position of the bullet to start at the aim of the of this position of the aim, right? Because we're going to start rotating this guy soon. Okay. Next up in our red bullet, uh, we're going to go into here and we're going to add a few things. Uh, bullet. Bullet. Here we go. Um, so we're, let's firstly, let's add all the uh, nodes that we need. And let's, add, I'm just going to copy this entire thing and we're going to read through it once one line at a time. So first we're going to have the path spawner node. This is where we're going to Essentially, we're getting where the spawner node is because we need to access that. Because um, let's actually take out this part. I'll show you why in a second. So this will allow us to just move towards our target. So we're going to take our target and we're just going to go towards it. We're going to do direction two for velocity. Once we set our velocity of the red bullet, then we're going to look at that target and we're going to move and slide. And that's it. Um, however, we also want to be able to um, delete any other pre-existing, uh, what are they called, bullets. If the tower has spawned a bullet, it's kind of a bug. Um, if, they tar if the tower spawns a bullet and that bullet does not hit that uh, soldier because it died to another bullet, then that bullet will start to just, um, it'll, it'll kind of just float around. So I've added in uh, this guy. Um, do, do, do. No, I think I added that somewhere else. This actually allows us to get the target. Sorry. So this allows us to take the path name and get the target global position, right? So we want to, we have the target name, um, which is path name because each, uh, path has its own unique name. So now we want to go into, main, go to path spawner and find the, that specific, path that we're looking at or we're trying to target right and in the bullet we're going to get the get child meaning we're going to get child zero which is this get child zero get this and then get child zero or sorry just get child like zero which is soldier and then we're going to get that global position of that soldier and we're going to constantly be updating the target position so that's how we have a homing device essentially and then just a little quick tip um why I did this, by the way, is just it's a very easy way to access anything. So if we get tree get root, this allows us to get the, uh, the root above main, and then we can say get main and then get path spawner. Um, and that's it. That's it for our bullet. And then let's add a way to delete the bullet. So in the area 2D, let's just add a body entered. This one's a lot easier. Um, we just check if the name is equal to soldier a or has a soldier a and then we're just going to queue free uh we'll do health in a second so we'll just ignore that so now when our soldiers enter the range it'll start to shoot towards the soldier and it, nothing will happen the bullet disappears but the soldiers don't so let's uh go into our soldier and add a few more lines so in our soldier what we're going to do is we're going to add some health and we're also just going to add a very simple line that's just saying if health is smaller than or equal to zero, we'll just keep free. And that is it. So now our bullets do five damage and now they should start to do damage. Let me increase the speed to like 500 so that goes long but faster. So now after two hits, they should die. Ah, never mind. They don't die because I don't do that. I don't reduce the damage. Okay, there we go. So now body.health minus equals the thing. There we go. So now they disappear. But now how do the question is, how do we rotate the tower? Because if you look at the bullet closely, the bullets do rotate, which is quite nice, right? So yeah, as you can see, they target the very furthest one. And if they enter this range over here, then they start to target that one instead. So how do I rotate the tower? Well, this one is actually a bit more complicated. Um, so I'll show you in a second. Ooh. Actually, one last thing we need to do actually in body exit to avoid it shooting very further away outside its range it does uh if a body does exit and it's still alive we don't want to keep targeting that body so we're going to just update this array essentially right this array that we have outside access we're going to just update it so that way we don't target to something that's outside of the 
the range, but it's still alive. So we're just going to update it that way. Okay. Now to update the, or not to update, but to rotate the uh, tower, this is actually a bit weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if uh, is instance valid cur, meaning if there is a current uh, soldier that I'm looking at or targeting, then I'm going to look at it. That's it. So this should allow us to essentially look at the soldiers. It's a bit wonky. Um, let me figure out why. Do, do, do. Um, let's find out why. Why is that happening? Scale. Oh, I think it's because this is scaled, which we don't want. I think that's why. Let's try that again. Let's see what happens. Ooh, nope. Um, aim, collision. Uh, we'll leave that in a second. Um, let's look at our last uh, line. That shouldn't affect it. Am I missing something? Current is current being updated. Yes, it is. Boo, boo, boo. Let me just. Let me just double check everything is right here. So in our bullet, we have rotated. Ooh, that's why. Okay, this can't be rotated. 90 degrees, the tower has to be rotated 90 degrees. And hopefully that should work. Okay, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> that took a little little while. Okay, so now our tower properly rotates towards whatever it's shooting. Um, and lastly, last piece of line that we're gonna add um, is to avoid um any bullets being so if I have multiple towers and here, let me just show you, try to show you. So if I have bleh, Let's delete that. So if I have this guy, let's have three towers right next to each other. So, so as you can see, the third bullet or the, those bullets are still there because there's something that entered the range and it didn't exactly hit because it already died. So in our tower, this isn't the best fix. In fact, um, this might not work perfectly, but every time the current object we're shooting at does not exist anymore, right? Because here we're checking if it's valid, meaning that or that thing in the array, so how, the, or we're start, eh, I can't talk, we're hitting something. But if we're not hitting something, meaning it's not valid, meaning it's null or doesn't exist or whatever, then we're just gonna full loop through our bullet container and delete all the bullets. We're just gonna delete all of them. We don't need them anymore. So now it looks a lot better. So now we don't have floating bullets kind of running around. Awesome. Uh, I think that's it. Let me just double check. Okay, yeah, I think that is it for today's video. We've added quite a bit. Um, this is kind of a long video. Um, it was kind of complicated, but hopefully you understood what was going on. Um, in the next video, we will add the UI the um, that allows us to drag and drop our, our things. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'll be able to get that sometime this week or week so if you guys like this video definitely subscribe um hit the like button i worked a lot on this video um what else follow my twitch i was streaming this morning for like four hours i streamed this entire process uh on my own uh you could definitely help me out if you think you can um which i would definitely appreciate uh also i have patreon I have a discord definitely check my discord down below uh, we have like 50 people which isn't too crazy but you know i'm definitely trying to grow it so definitely join. Uh, I would love to see you guys and maybe your projects. Maybe you have some personal projects that you want to share with me. So yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.